Alright guys, uh, I'm back with another video. I'm going to try to uh, make this one quick. Uh, I just did it, but I think I made it a little, little bit too long. So I'm going to show you all uh, how the AOS system works. And down in the description, if you check it, you'll see a, uh, a project where I isolated it for the Unreal Engine Mannequin and uh, made it available for you all. So, as you can see, everything works fine. And I'm going to break it down for you and I'm going to explain it to you how it works uh, and why he's doing everything that he's doing. So let's get started. If I open up this, you'll see that on my specific uh, character, I created a virtual bone version of the IK foot root, IK foot R, and IK foot L. And the reason why I did that is because for my character specifically, I'm using a character creator three character and they're not following uh, the feet like they're supposed to. So if you ever have issues like that, you might want to check and see and try creating a virtual bone that points uh, to the root, a virtual bone that points to the left foot uh, from this, and then uh, one from the right foot. And then this one is just pointing to itself. This one's pointing to the calf, to itself, to the calf. And then... Uh, over here uh, we're gonna get started so if you go into the foot IK animation uh, or if you go to the anim graph you'll see all I'm doing is using an, a linked anim layer and let me go ahead and ex explain to you how that works so if you just press new animation layer name it whatever you want make sure it's still selected up here you'll see this under inputs you can add an input if you don't add an input you can't uh, plug anything into it from the animation uh, graph and then uh, you just do this you come back over to the anim graph you right click you just type in linked you have to type it in off of what uh, off of the blank space because if you type it in over here as you can see they don't have inputs by default you're not going to get anything so if you select your linked anim layer and you come over here to layer and go to new animation layer uh, now it has the impose and now you can connect it so that's how that works. If we come in here, you'll see that he has uh, an apply foot plus pelvis offset, modify knee targets, apply IK to feet. Now I'm gonna break this down for you. Uh, these have already been calculated. We'll go into this afterwards. So he's getting this. These are in, uh, calculated in world space. And so for the transform modify bone, what he's doing is he's getting this virtual bone IK foot L offset. This one right here which uh, points right there at the ankle and what he's doing is he's saying add to existing for translation he's setting the bone to modify to that bone that virtual bone uh, under translation he's adding to existing and he's setting it to world space and what that's that's gonna do is it's gonna move this uh, it's gonna move this bone and rotate it to the calculated position and he's actually using that over here in the two bone IK. So what he's doing is he's first moving these IK uh, uh, foot virtual bones, and then he's telling the feet move to the move towards those bones. So over here, after he's set the virtual bone location and rotations, uh, he is adding doing a transform modify bone to the pelvis adding to existing in world space because this pelvic offset is calculated in world space and the pelvis offset is basically saying uh, which of these feet are lowest uh, in world space whichever one is lowest on the z-axis up and down whichever one is lowest set the pelvis offset to that location uh, so what that does is it allows him to move the pelvis uh, down so that the left foot is on a bottom step and the right foot is going through the top step. And then later, after he applies the IK to the feet, it'll move the right foot up to match the, the surface that it's sticking through. So he's using modified knee targets. Uh, these are also virtual bones, IK knee target L. So if you come back over here, you'll see those IK knee target L's. You might have been wondering why he was using uh, these. 
So if you come back over here, you'll see what he's doing is he's actually uh, creating a translation offset right here that he manually types in. Uh, and that is being used to drive the joint target uh, of the IK. So if you look here, if you look here, you'll see that the effector is down here at the feet. The joint target is up here. And that's pointing to the same thing we just set. So the reason why he needs that is because if he doesn't have that joint target pointing, uh, if he doesn't have it in front and slightly above the knee, then when he's walking up steps or whatever, or slopes, the knee will just go every which way. And I'll go ahead and show that to you. Uh, I'm trying to... Uh, excuse me if I'm going a little fast, but I know some people, they don't like slow videos. So you see what's going on with the knees there? Um, that's because it's not, we're not telling the knee to st stay pointing forward. So we'll go ahead and plug that back in and plug that back in. Go ahead and recompile it. And he's using bone space here because he's just adding this to its current location uh, in space for the, the virtual IK knee targets. So he's offsetting those from where there are from where they already are, which is at the kneecap. So if we come back over here, you'll see that they're they're located right here on the knee. So we have to bring those out and up slightly. So over here on the two bone IK, uh, He's using bone space because he's pointing them to a bone, uh, which is the virtual bone IK foot L offset, which, as you remember, we set over here using the calculated uh, positioning. So now that I got that out of the way, we'll come over here to the event graph, and you'll see I'm updating the foot IK right here. So if I dive into this, We'll see right here, we're just telling it, set the foot offsets if he's on the ground. If he's not on the ground, then uh, reset everything, zero it out. So we'll go ahead and dive into this one. So actually, I kind of failed to mention, mention something here. Let me go back over here to the animograph, and we're going to go to the default machine. And if you come over, if we come back here, you'll see he has these curve values. Now, he's setting the curve values inside of the blend spaces, uh, I mean, inside of the state machines themselves. So he's using a modify curve. So if we right click and say modify curve, we can right click this alpha and go to add curve pin, and we can, uh, we can set them, you see, and then it'll add another one. Uh, and we'll just uh, do this. Then we can right click and maybe remove this one. Anyway, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. He's using blend on his as well. So he's just turning them on. And uh, whenever uh, they're in a, a grounded state on his. And then he's turning them off, I'm assuming, somewhere else. I never found where he was turning them off at. But in my case, what I did is I just turned it off when he started when he starts to jump. So we'll come back over here to our update foot IK uh, graph, and we'll go back to the set foot offset one. And that's what he's doing here is he's saying, is this foot IK curve greater than zero? If it is, that means foot IK is on, and we can execute all this. So. If we come back over here, we'll, we'll see that we have a virtual bone IK foot L is the IK foot bone and root bone is the root bone. So the root bone sits on the ground. Let me go ahead and show you that. So if we come up here to the very top and we see the root bone is on the floor, but the VB IK foot L is sitting at the ankle, not, on, not at the heel. So he's uh, basically, he's just uh, getting that position at the ankle on the XY 
and then he's bringing it down to the hill which is uh, on the Z which is where the root is uh, located at that's the IK foot floor location he's adding to that and he's subtracting from that for the start and the end respectively he's adding 50 and he's uh, taking 45 away so 50 centimeters above the foot is where the trace will start and it'll go down 45 centimeters below the foot and the reason why he's doing that is because we want to make sure that if the foot is below the ground the trace will still hit the floor but if the foot is above the ground we want it to still be able to detect the floor so over here he's just saying is this surface that we hit is it walkable if it is execute the rest of this stuff this is the impact point and impact normal where the trace hit so if you see that little square right here that's uh that's where the the trace is hitting uh, so at that that's the location it's going to return the normal is basically a value between 0 and 1 uh, in a vector so x y z z uh, on in this case because this floor is flat it'll be z uh, 1 and everything else will be 0 x 0 y 0 z 1 so if it's a slope those values will be between 0 and 1 and uh, that gives us a scalable uh, vector that we can use to scale up a value so in this case he's using this impact normal to scale up this foot height which is an arbitrary value uh, that's used to offset uh, the feet location when they're on a slope and I'll show you that here in a second so when he multiplies the foot height by that normal that's coming up off the surface uh, in this case this one's uh, one it's one up on the z-axis so it's just if you go one centimeter above the z-axis and then you multiply that one by 13.5 you get 13.5 so now it's it's going up in the same direction 13.5 uh, and that's why he's doing that so if he were on a slope it would uh, scale that value up in that direction and that's why he's doing it so he's adding that to the impact point as an offset and he's doing that down here and he's subtracting it from this and then he's setting our current target our current location target as you remember which is our foot offset L target the position the position of the foot so if we just scale this up to five uh, let's say 50 that might be enough and then we come over here to a slope you'll see that the feet are now offset from where the trace is hitting and it looks funky but that's just uh, a fix for uh, s sloped surfaces and he decided that a value of 13.5 was appropriate foot height does not mean the actual height of the foot it uh, it means it's just an offset for sloped surfaces so over here he's rotating the feet using an inverse tangent uh, in this case uh, he's the a tan 2 is an inverse tangent where you uh, get the inverse tangent of a divided by b so if we come over here uh, opposite over adjacent would be a over b so the tangent of uh, theta uh, equals the opposite over the tangent but the inverse of uh, the inverse of the tangent the inverse tangent is the opposite over adjacent equals the angle so this is the opposite and this is the adjacent this is where he's pointing this is where he wants it to point so he wants to get the angle between uh, those two lines so that he can rotate his foot that's pointing this direction to point this direction and uh, that's how that works so he's using that to get the, ro the rotation angle of uh, that he wants it to rotate the foot by using the impact normal down here he's just uh, interpolating uh, these because if you don't use an interpolation right here you'll get real choppy motion so all this is doing is telling it say hey this is currently where you're at I want you to interpolate uh, over time towards this location target
He's doing that for the rotation as well. That sums up that. Uh, if you're wondering what this is, he's just getting, he's just avoiding doing this. That's all he's doing. So you can actually get, uh, so you can actually get a, uh, a variable for these inputs, uh, so that you don't have to run lines from them. And that's what he's doing. And since these are references, he's, uh, using, uh, if you just type in by ref, you'll see right here set by by ref variable. He's able to change the value of these uh, by setting them by reference. So with that out of the way, we're going to come back over here and we're going to go to the set pelvis IK offset. So over here, he's just saying uh, this curve plus the value of this curve at this time plus the value of this curve at this time divided by 2 should be greater than 0 if it's on. If it is greater than 0, uh, then it's true and you can execute this. Over here he's just saying which foot is lowest to the ground. Uh, whichever, if this one is less than this one, then set the pelvis target to this foot offset L target. Now since these are offsets and these aren't actual uh, locations, let's see. Yeah, so, since these these are actual offsets and they're not actual uh, locations, then we can uh, then we can use those for the pelvis directly and he's down here and what that does is again like I told you before uh, he just needs to move the pelvis down uh, so that the left foot or or the off the lowest foot is touching the ground that way the the leg doesn't get stretched because if you don't move the pelvis down the leg will stretch to meet that point unless you don't have it set for stretching and if it doesn't if it can't stretch then it won't go it won't touch the ground so he has to move the pelvis down right here he's saying if uh, the pelvis is the pelvis target is greater than the pelvis offset uh, on the Z then uh, interpolate from the pelvis offset to the pelvis target at 10 uh, at a speed of 10 else do it at a speed of 15 that's all he's doing that's for the interpolation that pretty much sums it up uh, I think I covered everything if y'all have any questions uh, ask down in the comments if you found this helpful like down below and uh, subscribe